Hello, my name is Trevor Pugh from uh, UTEC. I'm the Survey Technical Authority there. And today I'm going to give you a talk that I gave at Ocean Business in Southampton on managing the risks of being a first user of a new system. In this case, the XBlue uh, sparse LBL system. So before we go into the presentation for real, then we'll just cover something about what Action and UTEC are to the industry. So what do we do as in Action? We're here to solve customers' challenges to you know, by sort of bringing some good engineering, and we're trying to transition to the clean energy from the bad days of the past. How do we do it? Uh, a lot of it is about taking measurements and then using those measurements to drive better design and to inform construction of our subsea structures and infrastructure. Now, that takes a lot of effort. So we've acting as a group of companies that work together to provide integrated solutions with offices all around the world. And it's a sizable company, sizable organization that's done hundreds of projects to increase the commercial value to our clients. And you know, everyone's now wants to minimize the environmental impact and we've got to do that in cleverer ways and combining all these data measurements uh, with digital technology just uh, brings a better product to our clients. So our uh, services to our clients uh, across the whole piece of oil and gas and renewables uh, from start to finish of a project uh, right the way through to decommissioning and we cover all water depths from the depths oceanographic depths thousands of meters right up to landfall and indeed onshore part of the Actian group is this geoservices division where um, companies are brought together that cover this common theme of geophysical geotechnical offshore construction support and the related dimensional control digital twins that go with it. Now, each of those branches can offer consultancy and engineering support to our clients. So the picture that's over on the right hand side is uh, our deep water um, seabed drilling unit from uh, Benfic, which is one of the uh, three companies that uh, form the geoservices piece. So that includes uh, Benthic, Terrasond, and UTEC. Um, so we're going to focus today on UTEC because that's who I work for, and that's what this project uh, that we're going to discuss uh, was delivered by. So moving into the presentation, uh, UTEC has always been about uh, looking for innovative ways to support our clients and. So back in 2016, we did a very large project for Technet and 55 compacts were used in conventional LBL arrays. That took a long time to install. So after the project, we did a study that showed if we'd used this sparse LBL positioning, then we could have actually saved quite a few days of vessel time for the client. So we parked that because we didn't have a project that was big enough to get these time savings. We had to wait until 2019 for a, a project to appear that would benefit sparse solution or would benefit our clients if we use a sparse solution. So in 2019, we got uh, a tender document in. Now they just wanted conventional LBL positioning. Right, but we did a conforming proposal plus an alternative based on this sparse INS positioning and also this ROV slam boxing. And I'll explain what those are in a minute. That sparse proposal was well received by the client because they were looking for a pilot project to see if it was such a good idea and would give them the time savings. Now, after much negotiation, we were awarded the contract. And this had become now based on the use of sparse rather than the conventional arrays. So to progress, we did a sort of bit of a comparison between the various providers 
of sparse solutions. The client preferred XBlue, uh, but it had to be our decision. So after this comparison, we selected XBlue. It was the better, in our view, uh, system for the project. Uh, we got great support from them. And we wanted to create an alternate to the Sonodyne dominance in the market. Competition's good. Um, but we also wanted to learn about the XBlue system because uh, we thought that we'll be able to apply that to future projects and bring our clients uh, more time savings. That would give us a differentiator. Now, we've got nothing against Sonodyne Sparse Solution. And at the same time that we're doing this project, we're also using the Sonodyne Sparse Solution. So it's all about the innovation of Sparse, uh, but also the wish to use different suppliers who have got different capabilities in their equipment. So the, the XBlue Canopus Ramses of Sparse LBL positioning system is very it's similar to the compact RodNav Sparse solution from Sonodyne. It can also be used for conventional and USBL positioning. Now what Sparse LBL means, you've got fewer transponders on the seabed providing your positioning. And that saves vessel time straight away. You've got fewer deployments, fewer recoveries. And if you're working in 2,000 metres of water, it can take quite a time to take a transponder to the seabed and bring it back up again. There are other technical advantages, the longer battery life and the ability to do this ROV SLAM. Uh, so SLAM is simultaneous localization and mapping, which comes out of robots driverless cars, a uh, clever piece of software that uh, means that you save time. This isn't a technical presentation on Canopus and Ramses. Uh, it's about the process. So if you want more information about XBlue, then talk to XBlue. But they do have a distinguishing feature, they're pink. This talk is about being the first user of Canopus and Ramses. So what if it didn't work? then the client's not going to be happy because uh, you'll have to incur vessel time to install a replacement solution. We're not going to be happy because we've got to supply that replacement solution. And the client's going to be so unhappy with us, we're going to suffer reputational damage, which could mean loss of future work from that client and others. Also, XBlue weren't going to be happy if it didn't work. Uh, they would the system would get a bad reputation, which would take time, possibly never recover from. So it was a major decision to go with XBlue, uh, but we felt that the advantages outweighed the disadvantages and we could control the disadvantages, the disadvantages of being a first user. So that was done by a risk assessment to identify the things that could go wrong now, you can never reduce probability to zero, but you could take it to a freak combination of circumstances. Now, this was a high profile, so both XBlue and UTEC management were keeping a very close eye on this and making sure it was rigorously done. So the first risk that we identified that there wouldn't be enough units ready for the mobilization. So XBlue were having to make some 30 odd Canopus transponders and half a dozen Ramses to meet the requirements of the project. And we were nervous that they wouldn't make them in time. So we set a delivery date, right? That if XBlue didn't deliver the required amount by that date, then we had enough time to switch to a Sonodyne solution, which would be disappointing for everybody, but good for the performance of the project. Now we had fortnightly progress meetings to monitor those production, but also we were still developing, you know, what the final quantities were, right, including the number of spare units to take. So it was, we ended up with 30 plus 35 um, Canopus transponders and I think six Ramses units being delivered at the due date. So that risk was mitigated. The next risk was that um, Cannabis and Ramses wouldn't be able to do all the things that we wanted it to do on the project. So we had to sit down and step through the project. What are all the positioning tasks 
that we need to do with cannabis and Ramses, and can the system actually do them? So we identified a few things that uh, the system couldn't do. Now, Xblue knew that these, uh, these capabilities were missing, and they had them on their to-do list. So what we had to do, or what Xblue had to do, was to just shuffle the priorities around to get these capabilities. Again, we wanted those capabilities proved to us by a date, which in case they failed, we would be able to change to another solution. So that proving was done offshore La Ciotta in the south of France on the Xblue's test boat. Uh, it would have been nice to have gone and witnessed the, the proving uh, in person, but COVID prevented that. Instead, the trials demo was live streamed uh, over the internet to myself and others who were able to then uh, witness the, that these capabilities now worked. So tick, that's another risk dealt with. An obvious one would be our field crew not able to operate the system, which is going to cause project delays, unhappy client, and everything else. So that easy, you will train the people. But we also know that you can only do so much training and you actually need to have hands-on experience with the equipment. So we got some Campus and Ramses units across to a UTEC workshop for our personnel to actually plug together and get the feel of them. Right, then we also, uh, besides doing the remote training courses, had some remote hands-on use. This is where the boat went offshore, Astiotta uh, again, and our, some of our field staff were able to operate the software via the remote link uh, with the software running on the boat, as close as we could get to hands-on use with COVID travel restrictions. Then, good old-fashioned measure, we took a specialist tech on board the installation vessel for the start of the project. Slightly newer tech is we had a SATCOM link between the XBlue experts back in their office and the offshore spread. The XBlue experts could actually configure and operate the Ramses unit mounted on the ROVs that were on the vessel. Uh, now, we didn't actually need to use that link in anger, uh, but it was a very useful facility to have, and it proved that in the future, you could actually reduce your offshore manning, or certainly reduce the skills of your offshore manning by uh, having a remote link and having an expert do it remotely. Then, as the project ran on, and we uh, used up all the people that had, had the initial training and uh, we had to run further training courses and again those were run remotely so what would happen if the uh, we weren't able to operate the system efficiently uh, offshore now this was where during the training the field staff noted that uh, the user interface wasn't particularly efficient for their offshore use like previously, in all the demos and trials, the system had been operated by XBlue experts who had designed and built the system. So when you came to field staff who were used to operating positioning systems, they start wanting things changed in displays and lists and logs. So they compiled a list of all the improvements that they wanted, gave that to XBlue. XBlue assigned their software developers to implementing the changes, and then we proved that the changes had been done to the satisfaction of the field staff by and up by more remote trials of La Ciotta. We've got a new piece of kit here. Um, we were going to deploy 30 odd of them to the seabed for several months. What happens if there was a fundamental design flaw in the uh, system leading to sort of just multiple failures? So we had to go much further back into audits and checks than you would for long established equipment. So we audited 
the design process and the testing process for the pressure housing the transducer the battery packs right, to all items that if they had a, a fundamental design flaw would be uh, multiple failures on the job and it's blue were able to show us test reports design reports that uh, gave us satisfaction that there wasn't a design flaw similarly you could get a flaw in the manufacturing process causing multiple failures so we audited xblue's manufacturing and testing process during manufacturing at their breast factory now this is a, a different audit process to the audit process that you might employ on uh, the maintenance of um, of equipment coming from a rental company we were having to go back into the manufacturing process so a slightly different audit process uh, than an audit of a rental company's uh, maintenance program and again you know it's blue passed with flying colors uh, we had to do the audit remotely uh, so there was two of us uh, being stepped through the whole manufacturing process showing us examples of test reports uh, showing us the spares and the component inventory system uh, and they pass the audit but, but we were still nervous these were brand new manufactured systems now we would always test equipment before shipping it out to the vessel uh, so we had to develop specific test procedures for the canopus and ramses which although similar to compats and rovnavs are a bit different so we generated pre-mob test procedures now it would have been good to have done those in aberdeen uh, but time covid brexit prevented that happening so we had to do the testing remotely so that was one of the field engineers that was going on the job spending two days uh, remotely testing each of these units so they'd be connected to a computer and the computer had a remote link to where the engineer was and he was able to test them as if he was there staying on that record of no track record on reliability then what to do we've got more unit failures than you expect so now we're working in a remote location so we would always take um, probably 20 percent spares anyway but with the lack of track record on reliability we took an extra 20 percent and held equipment in france at the factory ready for dispatch if required we addressed that reliability issue by audit and also by taking more spares let's look at some of the secondary lessons that we'll learn before we move on to the real outcome of this uh, process remote training is not as good as in-person training you can't interact with the trainees and it's also difficult to standardize the computers on which they're learning they're all sat at home with their laptops and pcs numerous formats so it wasn't as good as being in the classroom and if you're not in the classroom you can't have hands-on familiarization and that's an important part of training and we tried to do some of it it would have been better to have done more but covid presented it quality audits can be done remotely especially when the, the quality system is totally electronic with no paper to look at you're looking at records on screen remote control link now uh, it's the future and to get that you do need to have early engagement between the IT departments uh, to manage all the firewall and security configurations and those remote control links will permit future down manning but these are secondary lessons to the real ones about successful first use you do need commitment from the user Utech, and the supplier xblue in this case right, we're taking on additional cost and risk right, and we're relying on the supplier giving us a working product so you've got to have trust that uh, both sides are going to deliver 
we're going to operate the kit properly and they're going to provide a working system because company reputations are at stake. You've got to, you can only do this if you've got collaboration between the user and the supplier. It's a big, big leap from demos and trials to actually putting it to use in the field. And you can do all the planning you want, but it's the field staff that are going to have to operate this system. So when they tell you the system's not good enough, then you listen to them and make it good enough for them. Now this process of a risk assessment just brought home that uh, you can't just plonk new equipment into the field and expect it to work. You've got to manage the risks associated with this first use. And that process can now be applied to other new equipment, other new systems. Right? It's uh, a good collective responsibility you could see everybody could see what was being considered, what was being done about it, and you, that can apply again and again, and it will just reduce the risk of failure. So, what did we get out of it? We got a successful first use of cannabis Ramses. Now we learnt about it, which means we can propose its system to future clients. Like when it's the best solution, it's not going to be always the best solution. We can now know enough about it that we can pick and choose. We've developed this process that we can apply to other new systems. And Blue have now got a track record. They can market their system to other users right, who can take it on knowing that it does work. Thank you for listening to that. Uh, I hope you found it interesting. Uh, if you want information, contact info at and we'll get back to you. Thank you.